The typical home in the United States today would cost you 170 ounces of gold. In Germany, 1923, it would have cost you one ounce. So what's the over under on something like that coming back? The idea of a dramatic revaluation of gold comes up now and then. Not often, it's really just a few people who've made it their job to make gold and silver come off as some kind of doomsday lottery tickets. Now, there's precedent out there. Some people will use the Weimar Republic, that's Germany, in 1923, where academically, at least, an ounce of gold could have bought a home. And that's, of course, based on a profound currency destabilization moment. You compare that to stable gold price. So if you found a homeowner willing to sell their home, valued in the local currency in 1923 Germany, well, technically, the price of an ounce of gold would have covered it. Well, we're going to fast forward this idea 100 years to present time to see if this idea is still relevant. Before we get back to it, if you're looking for gold or silver, check out SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for a spot. It's sdbullion.com slash new. Now, there are a few ways to go about this topic, and if you want this straightforward analysis comparing gold price to average home value, and you want the math behind how many ounces of gold it would take to buy a house at different times in history, well, Bald Guy Money has a deep dive on that topic. I'll give you a link to that recent video that he did in the description. Now, the appeal of that idea that you can stack gold at one price and then ride a wave of rapid appreciation timed alongside rapidly falling currency and home values and come away with a profoundly discounted home well that's pretty compelling now in the case of the weimar republic in germany in the 1920s hyperinflation was so severe that the currency lost its value and people lost their savings almost overnight now this is one of those reasons that you might want gold as a backup but the specific case here is very extreme and probably not one to model your plans around Let's take a look at this idea, though. Depending on our source, the median home price in the United States today is around $420,000. That's according to the Central Bank of St. Louis. So that means that you would need around 174 ounces of gold to buy a typical home here. That's typical meaning median rather than average because average would actually be higher. So what would have to happen for your house to lose 99.4% of its value? Going from $420,000, typical median price, to $2,400, which is the price of an ounce of gold. And then how bad would things have to be for you to think to yourself, now is the right time to sell? I need to get this $2,400 of equity out of my house. So yeah, I don't think that we'll ever see a case where we're able to pick up a typical home for an ounce of gold or a city block for a tube. Those are the stories that we hear now and then. It's a fun thought experiment maybe, but probably not worth much space in our brains. The more relevant idea here, at least to me, is the occurrence of negatively correlated waves. So windows of time where you could pick up a home at a much cheaper ratio, meaning gold prices at a peak when housing costs or at a low, and then not so much buying a typical home as much as maybe buying an investment property or paying off a mortgage of a home that you already live in. Now, a swing like that would be interesting. Well, as it turns out, a $420,000 median home price in the United States is $8,200 lower than a year prior. The spot price of this stuff, gold, is right around $2,400 today. I think it's $2,410. Now, in 2023, when the median home price was $428,000, well, gold would have been right around $1,900. So it would have taken just over 225 ounces of gold to buy a typical home just a year prior. So the idea of a swing or a dual swing in opposite directions allowing you to buy a house for less gold is legitimate. In a single year, it would have taken 50 fewer ounces of gold or 29% fewer ounces to buy this imaginary typical home. Now, the reason this idea is interesting to me, but I don't give it much thought, is really pretty simple. I need a place for my family to live. And I need that place before I need 174 ounces of gold or even the 120 ounces that it would have taken at gold's high in 2011 when the housing market was also depressed. So, 
Regardless of whether you rent or own, you're probably paying for a place to live for decades before you would likely have enough gold to buy that home outright, even in the case of an extreme double swing where gold spikes and housing prices fall. Let's say gold price doubled over the course of the next five years and housing prices fell 10%. 10% doesn't seem significant. Well, the annual single family house appreciation is 6.5% on average. That's according to statistics. So a 10% depreciation rather than a 37% appreciation, which would be five years compounding that 65 that's nearly a 50% swing. So these numbers, they're made up of course, but I'm basing them off of feasible cases. So if the price of gold doubled, it would be $4,820. And if the median price for a single family home in the United States went down 10%, that would be 378,000. So in a case like that, it would take 78 ounces of gold to buy a house. So if our goal was to buy a house with gold, the question would be, how long would it take to accumulate that? We need 78 ounces of gold. Could we stack six ounces of gold a year? That would take 13 years to get to 78. So that isn't terrible. It's a much better ratio than the actual cases that we've seen here, like what we saw in 2011. But before we set off on something like this, we have to ask, what if we put that money toward additional mortgage payments? How many years could we cut from a 30-year mortgage? And this is really where the idea breaks down a little bit. And just as a warning, we have to do some math here. We're going to look at a $420,000 home loan at a 4% interest rate. Why 4%? Well, I kind of made it up. We're going to go with the fixed 30-year mortgage. And if we said it takes 13 years to build up 78 ounces of gold, that'd be buying six ounces a year, we'd be spending $1,250 a month. That's with no appreciation taken in. We're just going to lock in that price and use it. So if we directed $1,250 each month toward the 30-year fixed mortgage instead, we'd cut 16 years off the mortgage term. So 14 years to have the house paid off rather than 30. Now, I don't want to squash the magic here. If that imaginary swing happens, you're in great shape. You've been making minimum mortgage payments and you have enough to buy another discount home. Now, if the swing doesn't happen, we're probably at the most likely case where you've been accumulating gold and you now have the option to either pay off the home you currently live in or do something else entirely. If I can make a generalization here, though, most people have a lot more discretionary income later in life as other expenses are paid off. So by the time a person has 78 ounces of gold accumulated, they probably have a lot of other things already figured out and a home probably tops that list. So like I mentioned, maybe you're paying off the tail end of a mortgage with some gold. Maybe you're keeping it around for other things, other opportunities, or simply as a backup fund. For me, it's backup and possible capital for the right opportunity. I gave a specific example of that in my million dollar story a few videos back. But where this idea possibly becomes irrelevant is that if I don't use it, maybe a kid or a grandkid would. So my thought here is not that we don't have any risk of currency devaluation. I actually think we do. I just don't think that we're living in the Weimar Republic. I don't expect overnight currency devaluation here, but it could be something my kids have to deal with. Who knows? Maybe there's a day that they would be able to buy a house for 78 ounces of gold. And maybe that day is early enough in life for them that it sets them up to get over whatever crazy events would lead to that. And if things are so bad, like they were in 1923 Germany, well, they can also take care of 77 friends as well. Let's call it good there. I'm curious if any of you plan to use gold to pay off a mortgage, maybe buy that cabin in the mountains, place on the lake, hobby farm. Maybe you're just holding on to it, intending to pass it down. Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you want to hear more of the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.